The scripture tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. That makes total sense. Because if you'll just take stop for one second and look back over your life, I guarantee you that every one of us in this room have got at least one incident in our life where we know we have seen the power of the tongue produce death. Death to relationships, death to jobs. How many people you know have been fired because of their mouth? How many marriages have been destroyed because of mouths, because of the tongue? So let's use our words to benefit us. Let's use our words to make the world around us better. Let's use our words to make our relationships better. Let's let's use our words to bring life to our marriage, life to our kids, life to our jobs, life to our minds, life to our families. Speak words that edify. Speak words that build up. Speak words that embrace. Speak words that forgive. Speak words that love. Speak words that heal. Just about everybody that you encounter is often going through something that may not be obvious from the outside, but they're facing a battle on the inside. Everyone that you come across is facing some type of battle in their life. I hope that you'll embrace, that you have no idea what God might do through a single word of encouragement. You have no idea how God could use you to offer someone hope, to build someone's faith. And I don't know about you, but there is so much negativity in the world today. I can't open up my social media feed without being discouraged. I can't read a news app without just being depressed. I can't talk to people with all the heartbreaking news in the world without being disheartened. And so many people in a polarized world can be so incredibly critical, so undeniably hateful. I think it's time that we as believers step in and lift others, bring words of hope, bring words of encouragement, because the words we speak are filled with power. Our words can build up or our words can crush. In fact, scripture says in Proverbs 18, 21, that the tongue has the power of life and of death. I want my words to build your faith, to strengthen your confidence, to believe that God is for you, that he's with you, that he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, he's working in you. If it were up to me, I would encourage you and build your faith because everyone, you see, is facing a battle that you don't know anything about. Words are full of power. They can heal, they can wound, they can minister death, they can minister life, they can encourage, they can discourage, they can build up, they can tear down. People get divorces over words. Families are split apart over words. People lose jobs over words. People have insecurity and a poor self-image over words that have been spoken to them. Words are containers for power, and we need to choose our words very carefully, and it's time for us to step up to the plate and be accountable for the words that we allow to come out of our mouth. No man can tame the tongue. We need God's help. So you want to pray every day for God to help you with your mouth. We, we are constantly speaking words, and even a few can have the power of life and death. Now, some of you know this because you grew up in homes where a few words spoken to you had power of life or had power of death. And you can remember those words, just three or four words that maybe a parent, a teacher, a sibling, a friend, a coach said to you, and it either brought some life or brought some death into your world. One of the best things you can do for your relationships if you're married, if you have children, if you're a leader or an influencer at work, if you have someone in your, in your small group, is to bless them with words of encouragement. Set the blessing free. You encourage what you want to see, and you typically see more of it. If it were up for me, up to me, I would be so encouraging. If you think something good, say it. If you think something good, say it. In a world full of so much criticism, so much hatred, so much disappointment, so much negativity, as people of the light, 
will lift up others around us. So Genesis 1, the Bible tells us the earth was formless, it was empty, or it was void. And it says that darkness was over the surface of the deep. So there was, there was just nothing. There was nothing. And then verse 3, here's what we read. <clears throat> and God said. Maybe your translation says, and God spoke. So God speaks into the nothingness. He speaks into the darkness. And he says, let there be light. And there was light. And so at the very beginning of time, God creates the universe, but how does he do it? What tool does he use? He, he uses words. He speaks the universe into existence. God says, and it is. And we see this throughout the creation account. God said, and it, and it, and it happened. He speaks it. And so God uses words to bring about life and light. God uses words to build up, to, to create. He speaks into darkness and he says, light and the lights come on. And so we see from the beginning, the power of words, that words are the tool that God uses. Flip over a couple chapters, Genesis three. And in this passage, uh, we see the, that words have the power of death. And so this is the passage of scripture where sin enters into the world. Um, God has created man and woman. He said that it's very good. Now Satan comes on the scene in the form of a serpent. And verse one tells us that the serpent was clever, more clever in fact than any wild animal God had made. And what did he do? He spoke. He spoke to the woman and he said, do I understand that God told you? So he speaks and when he speaks, he attacks what God has said. And do, do I understand that God told you not to eat from any tree in the garden? And then he would go on to say, hey, God didn't really say that. And so what does the enemy use? The enemy uses words to bring death to where there was life and to bring darkness to where there, is, there was light. Now here's what's interesting, of course, is that the serpent's words were not true, but that didn't keep his words from having power, right? Like the moment Eve, Adam and Eve, speak the words in their own hearts, the moment they believe those words, they give life to them. They empower them. So God speaks, the serpent speaks, and we just see from the beginning, there's the power of life, there's the power of, of, of death. God speaks and he creates and he builds and he blesses. The enemy speaks and he tempts and he accuses, he deceives, he destroys. It's hardwired into the universe, the power of, of words. Am I, am I speaking life or am I speaking death into the world around me? You know, it's so amazing, the power of this tongue. In James chapter three, he illustrates it this way. In verse three, he says, when you put bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey, you can turn the whole animal. He goes, or take ships as an example. Though they're large and driven by strong winds, they're steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person. It sets the whole course of his life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. My tongue right now could be set on fire by hell. What does he mean by that? That Satan himself could influence what I have to say. The words coming out of his mouth could come straight from hell itself. And any time I use this mouth to tear someone down, guess who's in control of my tongue at that minute? Hell. Anytime I use this mouth to do anything but bring glory to God, who's using this? When I'm bringing glory to myself, who's using this? It's Satan. He's got control of it. You and I, we have the ability to have our tongue set on fire by hell to say things that will actually pull people away from God. It's a dangerous thing. That's what this passage is about. It's like, do you know how powerful you are? And in and, and, uh, and verse 9, he says, And with this tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who've been made in God's likeness. And what this verse says is, 
can't praise God with your mouth and also curse men, and then he says, who have been made in the likeness of God. And what this passage is saying is, do I ever have a right to curse anyone that was made in the image of God? And I don't want God seeing me on this earth cursing someone that he loves. It's about love. You're called, you don't have a right to hate anyone that God created and use this mouth to curse anyone that God wants saved. I mean, really, the heart of God is Romans 5, 8, of that while we were sinners, that God demonstrated his love for us and Christ died for us. Not because we were so lovable, but he looks down and goes, wow, these people are rebelling against me, but I love them, and I love them so much that I'm going to pursue them. It's not about God looking down and going, man, look at them rebel against me. I'm going to curse them. No, instead, I'm going to send my son down and show love to them and save them. And in the same way, as a reflection of Jesus Christ, I'm supposed to look at those who are antagonistic toward God and love them and pursue them and save them and pray for them, but not curse them. Um, you know, he uses this idea of, he says, out of the same mouth, you know, verse 10, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. He goes, you can't use this mouth to praise and curse. Understand, when we became a believer, we said, God, here, here, here's my tongue. And then every once in a while I go, wait, God, give, let me get my tongue back for a second. Let me use it. I'm going to let Satan borrow it for a little bit. Here, Satan, go ahead. Okay, use my tongue now. Let me gossip. Let me say some things that aren't true. Let me slander some people. Let me put some people down. Let me, you know, do this, do that with this tongue. And then we come back, okay, God, I'm done with it. You can have it back. You just, you just, you just gave that to Satan? to borrow for a little bit and then you give it back to me and you take it back he goes you can't use that same you can't let us both use this tongue man whose is it out of the same mouth you can't have blessing and cursing why do blessing and cursing come out of your mouth because there's blessing and cursing in your heart you need a new heart you need God to change who you are. This message is not about biting your tongue and offering lip service. I need you to change my heart. I don't want anything to come out of this mouth that doesn't honor you. This tongue was created by God. God made it. Colossians 1.16 says, All things were created by Him and for Him. Why did God make this tongue? To praise Him. I really believe that we open doors for the enemy through complaining. God gave us our mouth for one reason, and that's to glorify Him. You have a mouth to glorify God. Amen? And that's what we need to use it for. I think so often we talk more about what the enemy's doing than we do about what God's doing. We don't need to talk fear. We need to talk faith. Why? Because our words are powerful. Our words are containers for power. Your words can carry your faith to the kingdom of God and release angels to help you. Or your words can carry your fear to the kingdom of darkness and just release more trouble in your life. And, and what would happen if certain words that we spoke to people, they would just show up on that person and they were just always there. We would be careful with the words we spoke because we, we wouldn't take them lightly. We would understand the impact that they had, that they, they don't just go away. And the Bible helps us understand that, that our words have that kind of, of power. And most of us could probably give some examples of words that were spoken to us that have been tattooed on us in some way or another. And they were spoken perhaps impulsively or carelessly or thoughtlessly. Bible says, Proverbs 12, 18, the words of the reckless, the words of the thoughtless, the, the, the words of the careless pierce like swords. They, they do more damage than we realize, but the tongue of the wise does what? It, it, it brings healing. And so with our mouth, we can destroy, or with our mouth, we can heal and we can bring life. That through Jesus, he can speak life where there is death. He, he can speak light into darkness. His word is more powerful than any other word. 
Any word that you've said to yourself, any word that's been spoken to you, his word, his word overrides that. And so we listen to his word and we speak his word and then we believe his word and then we watch and we see what God does.